What a humiliation. Just as Blue Origin was gearing up for its debut flight, two serious issues have surfaced with New Glenn's hardware. Is this game over? Plus, this weekend, NASA will reveal its final decision on when and how Starliner will return. Meanwhile, Amazon is stepping up its game by upgrading its systems to boost satellite launch operations. Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Since the beginning of this year, Blue Origin has been intensifying its efforts to prepare New Glenn for its debut flight. Expectations for the first orbital launch are higher than ever. However, recent developments have dealt a significant blow to that momentum, with two consecutive failures reported by Bloomberg. So what exactly happened? The first failure occurred during the transportation of New Glenn's upper portion to a storage hangar. During this process, the structure crumpled on its own. The cause has been attributed to worker error. Specifically, the rocket was exposed to varying environmental conditions, high temperatures and humidity outside in Florida, followed by sudden exposure to significantly cooler air-conditioned conditions inside the storage hangar. This abrupt change in pressure within the upper portion was not adequately monitored or managed, leading to a hardware failure due to a lack of necessary decompression measures. While the first incident happened during transport, the second occurred during testing. Another upper portion of New Glenn experienced an explosion, likely due to excessive pressure during stress testing. It's important to note that these two incidents involve hardware intended for the second and third flights, not the upcoming debut mission. The second flight is currently scheduled for around August of 2025, approximately 10 months after the initial launch. Fortunately, no injuries have been reported. Blue Origin engineers are working diligently to resolve these issues. A company spokesperson expressed confidence, stating, We're constantly, constantly testing new hardware and configurations. Those tests, including ones with anomalies, allow us to make our future hardware and systems more robust. We are ramping up our production efforts across the board and looking forward to even more flights next year. Despite this optimism, these issues highlight long-standing challenges for Blue Origin. The company has a reputation for slow development, which has prevented it from reaching orbit, a situation that is increasingly unacceptable given its potential. Blue Origin's biggest competitor, SpaceX, reached orbit in 2008. Even a smaller competitor like Rocket Lab achieved orbit in 2018, and has since completed over 50 orbital flights. This comparison is not flattering for Jeff Bezos and his team. More concerning is the potential impact of these problems on New Glenn's debut mission scheduled for early October, which is responsible for launching NASA's Mars spacecraft, Escapade. Although the recent failures do not directly involve the hardware for this mission, Blue Origin may need to reassess its entire system. There is also a possibility of FAA intervention which could further delay the launch. Given that we are now in late August with just over a month until the scheduled launch, the question remains, will Blue Origin be able to meet the deadline? If the schedule cannot be maintained, the mission will likely be delayed with significant consequences. The Mars mission relies on the optimal distance between Earth and Mars, meaning a delay could push the launch back by two years, a scenario NASA is keen to avoid. What do you think? Will New Glenn's debut mission be delayed after these incidents? Reply yes or no in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's development journey. Looking ahead, the future of New Glenn is uncertain. These recent issues have directly impacted the rocket's next two flights, raising the possibility of further delays. Achieving orbit may prove to be an insurmountable challenge for Blue Origin, even if they succeed, matching the accomplishments of SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, or the still-developing Starship seems unlikely, given New Glenn's slow progress. Moreover, even against smaller competitors like Rocket Lab, Blue Origin's prospects are unclear. Another competitor, Sierra Space, is also emerging as a potential industry giant with promising projects and talks to acquire ULA. The game may be over for Blue Origin even before it begins. 
Finishing up with Blue Origin, we now turn to NASA's plans for Starliner. This weekend, the agency is set to make a final decision on when and how the spacecraft will return. On X and in an agency update, NASA stated, Engineering and spaceflight specialists from NASA and Boeing continue data analysis ahead of a decision this week on the path forward for the Starliner spacecraft's return from the International Space Station. NASA's decision on whether to return Starliner to Earth with astronauts aboard is expected no earlier than Saturday, August 24th at the conclusion of an agency-level review. In another update, NASA added, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson and leadership will hold an internal agency test flight readiness review on Saturday, August 24th for NASA's Boeing crew flight test. About an hour later, NASA will host a live news conference at 1 p.m. EDT from the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston. The conference will likely focus on evaluating the results of the Starliner test process. Based on that, they will decide whether the two astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will return on the Starliner spacecraft or if they will need a SpaceX vehicle to return to Earth. Currently, the two astronauts have spent about 80 days on the ISS, 10 times longer than originally planned. Problems with the RCS thrusters, helium leaks, and undocking software are causing Boeing and NASA to struggle to determine a safe return date. This situation poses significant risks if they attempt to return with the crew aboard Starliner. If NASA chooses to use Dragon, they will have three specific options to consider. Firstly, one of the two Starliner astronauts could return on Crew 8, with the other returning on Crew 9 next year. This would mean Crew-9 would launch with only three astronauts. Alternatively, both could return on Crew-8, allowing Crew-9 to launch with its usual complement of four astronauts. These scenarios would mark the first time SpaceX's Dragon flies with more than four crew members. A third, safer option would be for both Starliner astronauts to return on Crew-9, which wouldn't affect Crew-8. In this case, SpaceX would only launch two astronauts, leaving space for the Starliner crew. They would then return after about six months in early 2025. Compared to Starliner, Dragon is offering many potential options and has proven itself capable of handling all of them. Dragon has consistently outperformed Starliner with its impressive track record over the years. Now, NASA faces one of its most crucial decisions in recent years. We will keep updated with important information from this meeting as soon as possible. Hopefully, they will carefully consider all factors and make the most reasonable choice to ensure the safety of the astronauts. No one wants a disaster like those of the last century to occur. What do you think NASA will choose? Give us your short thoughts, predictions, what have you, in the comments section. Finally, let's take a look at an update on Amazon's expansion at Kennedy Space Center to support the company's satellite launches. Amazon is investing $19.5 million to expand its satellite processing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, aiming to reduce delays in deploying its 3,200-strong Project Kuiper broadband constellation. This investment will fund the construction of a secondary 3,900 square meter support facility at the site, which is expected to accelerate the launch cadence in light of a regulatory deadline to deploy half the constellation by July of 2026. This new facility will join a 9,300 square meter satellite processing building that Amazon announced last year at Kennedy's runway equipped launch and landing facility, bringing Amazon's total investment at the site to nearly 140 million US dollars. Amazon mentioned in a blog post that construction for the second facility is expected to be completed by early 2025, while the primary payload facility is still on track to finish this year. This expansion is crucial for avoiding delays in satellite deployment, particularly given the challenges faced by their primary launch partners like Blue Origin, ULA, and Ariane 6. Currently, these partners are experiencing frustration due to multiple delays and technical issues. Ariane 6 has encountered problems with its debut mission, leaving uncertainty about the timing of its next flight. Blue Origin has also faced setbacks, as mentioned earlier in this video. The question now is whether Amazon's expanded facilities will be enough to overcome these obstacles, or if their launch partners can meet the increased demand. Perhaps the issue lies in Amazon's initial choice of partners. Had they chosen SpaceX, they might have avoided many of these complications. This situation highlights SpaceX's superiority in the industry. 
Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.